All right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Senior veteran coach Travis Adam, along with Hi, Charles bro. Osario. Thank you very much, Heck Coach yeah, Charles Osario. Heck yeah, man. So yeah, dude, we're we're on East Coast, so it's afternoon for us, right? Twelve oh one p.m. Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, a lot of people are watching this in the morning, but uh, but yeah, man, we get the uh, we get the benefit of checking it out over here. So today's today's topic is VA healthcare. Um, kind of talking about the VA healthcare system. Um, but as always, right, before we get into things, you know, let's hear where you're from. Let's hear where you're, uh, where you're, where you're chiming in from today. Um, where you're currently located would be great. And throw in your, uh, throw in your time and service, right? And, uh, and kind of what branch you're at. So we can go ahead and do some shout outs to y'all. All right, we got some. Don, USMC 74 to 90, Southern Cal. Heck yeah, man. Excellent. Eric, South Carolina. Good deal, good deal. Eric, I'm just north of you, man. I'm uh, North Carolina myself, so. AP Blue Water, 6970. All right, good deal, Gary. Welcome, welcome. Eric Bray. Don Atienza from Woodbridge, Virginia. You're not too oh, far. Yeah, I was gonna say we got a lot of East Coasters coming up. Oh, there exactly. we go, Colorado. Finally, finally, we get the we get someone outside of East Coast. <laughs> Another Colorado, good deal, good deal. Love right. Colorado. Colorado's an amazing state. SoCal, United States Marine Corps, Gonzalez, Todd Joseph Wishart, United States Marine Corps, eighty-seven ninety-three SoCal. Excellent, Don Atienza, ninety-two to two thousand and twelve. Great career there, Don man. There you go, Nikki uh, Lasha, United States Army, nineteen ninety-two oh, to twenty-two. To twenty-two, you must have just recently got out. Huh? We're only, I mean, we're only second second month in uh, twenty twenty-two right now. Wow, Manuel Salazar, good morning from Ohio, retirado, retired. Awesome, awesome. Paul Gardenhire, Army seventy-nine and ninety-two. United man, States Charles, Charles, man, I only spent, I only spent eight years in all these people are coming in with all these, uh, with all this time, man. I'm like, I'm like jealous, you know? Wow. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And this is beautiful, man. Yeah, brother. Ricky Dowdy, man. What's up, brother? Hey, Ricky. <laughs> Jim Hendricks. Heck yeah, man. Good to see you here. Army 7589. Vietnam vet candle. Awesome. Thank welcome, you, welcome. Got a, got a lot of a lot of Marine Corps showing up here, man. Nice. Um yeah, and then we got the got Dennis with uh, dual service there, Air Force and Army. Gary Peterson, Navy, 6692. Velvet James, uh 8192. Awesome, Thanks. Awesome. Nice to see Air Force, huh? 66 to 70. Fred Coleman, Army, 82nd, 73 to 75. Cool, cool. West Melbourne, Florida. Weather must be great down there. Well, it was it was cold. It was cold last week, I think. Uh, I think they had, some, they had some pretty chilly days, just like just like kind of what we did here on the East Coast, too. Uh, you know, I mean, Texas got hit pretty hard uh, with some cold weather, too, and a little bit of snow. So, Chuck Dobbins, man, I just talked to you like an hour ago, brother. Good to see you here. <laughs> Mark Nichols, Army 8290. Tony Lafayette, U.S. Army 07 uh, 2011. I got to do a quick shout out to this one right here. One of my one of my clients. What's up? What's up? Good to see you here. Charles Smith, 89 to 2000, South Carolina. Thank you. Yeah. Man, we got uh, got quite a quite a few vets in today, man. I'm so excited for this. I'm I'm excited to kind of bring some bring some VA healthcare stuff um, to y'all, and and hopefully hopefully we can teach you something, right? That's the biggest thing is is hopefully there is something that that we can bring to you guys today that that is of value, and you guys are able to take back. Um, you know, being that being that a lot of y'all are are veterans, right? And and, and maybe service connected, maybe not service connected, but. But VA healthcare, um, you know, is, is is definitely is definitely something to to look into, right? Being a veteran, and we'll kind of go over some of those stuff today, right, Charles? Um, definitely. And we'll talk about 
you know, who, who's all eligible, right, for, for kind of uh, VA, VA health care. And a lot of that, you know, a lot of people don't think that they're eligible because, well, you know, maybe I wasn't service connected for something. Maybe I didn't serve overseas, right? Well, yeah. there's a lot of different criteria that, that are included in there. Um, and then we'll touch on, we'll touch on CHAMP VA a little bit. Um, I know uh, one of the, you know, we, we have we have a couple classes, uh, Facebook Lives out there too, and, and even YouTube um, videos about the CHAMP VA program that kind of go a little bit more in depth. Ours is going to be kind of just an overview of, of that program today. Um, we'll kind of share how to get enrolled in it as well. And then, uh, you know, the different types of care that's, that's, that's out there. So, you know, I've used, I've used the VA healthcare system for a few years now, um, and, 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 in multiple different realms. So, um, you know, I've done that and Charles, I mean, if, if you want to, if you want to share a little bit about yourself, brother, um, let's go ahead and hear, um, you know, kind of your background and everything, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, my name is, Coach Charles Rosario. Uh, I was born in New York, uh, raised in Puerto Rico. I joined the United States Air Force in 1997 out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, basically, I, I was in for uh, three years, uh, ended up getting out. And basically, uh, with 9-11, uh, I ended up joining the Army National Guard. Uh, and then uh, I did uh, military intel. And I was deployed to actually uh, guard uh, chemical depots. So uh, I did everything from military intel to 11 Bravo. Uh, basically put a lot of beating to my body. I enjoy it. I don't miss it. I miss uh, the camaraderie, the, the brotherhood uh, that I had in the military. And uh, felt a little lost that, uh, you know, uh, when I got out. And now I'm, I'm here with this beautiful company. Uh, VA claims insider that you know is a whole bunch of veterans helping veterans and and I'm extremely passionate about it uh, that I'll be able to you know to help veterans and and have a, a strong community uh, okay. behind us. So that you know that's basically a little bit about me, and I still reside in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, brother. For sure, man. It's great. It's great to have you here, Charles. Man, um, you know I'm I'm really excited for it. Charles is uh, is also a Spanish speaking veteran, right? Uh, veteran coach. That which is, is uh, which was phenomenal, um, you know, to uh, to help out our brothers and sisters, um, you know, throughout uh, throughout you know any type of language barriers that may be there. You know, it's awesome to have to have to have staff that that can do that as well. You know, um, I get a little jealous sometimes that I can't speak another language, right? Um, but yeah, um, and I do see some questions rolling in on the side here. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to kind of try to answer those towards the end. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So just keep flowing them over there. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's check that out and I'll get my, I'll get a little background on myself. So senior veteran coach, Travis Adam here, um, currently in North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina is where I reside. Um, uh, moved down here about three years ago. I'm originally from, uh, you know, kind of the frozen tundra, right? Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> so it's so a go pack go, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's, uh, joined, joined the army when I was, when I was 17 and a half, um, shipped down to basic training, um, in uh in 2000 2005 i went down to uh, fort leonard missouri um did my OSET training down there i was a military police officer um fast forward some years man um went into uh went into the reserve side as an it specialist right um so got a little got a little computer background on me i'm actually i'm actually currently using uh uh vocational rehabilitation or i guess vocational readiness uh i guess is what they call it now through the va um and, and I'm getting a, I'm getting a degree in, in cybersecurity as well. So, you know, kind of military translated over to uh, civilian. over to civilian life a little bit there too. But, you know, my my biggest thing is I I, I love helping our vets, right? Um, as as you said, and you know, it's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be here, here with this organization, right? Um, and 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 that's why I kind of like our topic a little bit today, right? Is it's not it's not talking about you know disability compensation, right? Which is what which is what we normally focus in on. Right. Um, you know, so so it kind of it kind of made us dig a little bit. Right. And, and kind of get out of our, our, our shell and, and, and kind of look into, you know, well, hey, how do we how do we present this VA healthcare, care, um, you know, to to all of our listeners today? So, um, you know, it, uh, I, I learned some things. I don't know about you, man, but I, I definitely learned some things while going through it. So, yeah, I definitely learned a lot uh, in that aspect uh I'll be quite honest. Like I said, I, I didn't know that there was so many benefits that, that, you know, as a veteran you have and, and uh, that you're not really uh, knowledgeable about. 
Uh, and that to me, uh, like I said, it's uh, joining a veteran community that that's knowledgeable. Uh, it really opens up your mind to really see things in a whole different perspective and what you're entitled to. So you're not kind of thrown out there uh, to the wolves. Uh, you do have resources. It's just a matter of getting that knowledge and, and, and being able to tap into the right source so you can uh, have access to that. So that's the beautiful thing about this this company. Uh, we provide that information. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it's great. So, so yeah, man, let's, let's, let's roll into, let's roll into the healthcare benefits. Right. And let's talk about, well, who's all eligible first off. Right. So, you know, when, when you're thinking of eligibility for healthcare and, and, and VA healthcare, right. Like I said before, a lot of, a lot of veterans think that, oh, you know, I, I wasn't overseas or I didn't, I didn't serve that long. Right. I'm not really eligible. So, you know, some of the basic eligibility is that that you enlisted after September seventh of nineteen eighty, right? Um, which which is a lot of a lot of the people that we have on the call today. Um, you know, I, I know that there were some before that as well. Um, but yeah, and you have to you had to have entered active duty before like October sixteenth, nineteen eighty one, as well for it. Correct. Um, you know, so that's so that's like one one criteria of eligibility, right? Then if you're service connected. Right, service connected for any type of disabilities, whether it's whether it's fifty percent, hundred percent, ten percent, right? Even that ten percent, the zero percent, you're also eligible, right? And we'll kind of get into like those priority lists a little bit um, here while we're talking, because that's where it kind of breaks down. Um, you know, if, if you will have copays or no copays, um, or if you served prior to September seventh, nineteen eighty, you're eligible as well. Um, reserves and National Guard people. Um, I'm not sure if we have any you have any tuning in today, but um, if your only active duty time frame was active duty for training, and you don't have a you don't have a disability or you don't have a service connected disability, um, then then you're actually not eligible underneath uh, underneath the guidelines there. But um, you know, one of the big things with with reserve and National Guard is, um, you know, I mean. Think about the last conflicts that we've had, right? A lot of those National Guard Reserve troops have been called up, right, and uh, and have kind of filled those shoes. So, um, you know, there there are other options out there if uh, if you if you were only on active duty for training, but uh, but yeah, so that's one of the things I want to kind of touch on a little bit there as well. Um, if you're med boarded, right, typically uh, you know you you are given a percentage, but some people aren't given a percentage when they're med boarded. Um, so, you know, if the military made or, you know, cause a disability or made it worse by active duty service, you are you are eligible as well. Um, if you're discharged for a hardship. So so that one there, um, you know, is, is a little bit interesting, kind of needs to get a little bit more dug into. But, um, you know, one of the big things there is, you know, medical hardships, um, you know, if, if you were if you were discharged due to that reason. So, um, yeah, brother, let's go ahead and just talk about some of these priority lists, right? There's, so there's eight priority lists that the VA has in it. And, and, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting because it puts you on different tiers for different healthcare reasons. Um, and, and, and the priority list is kind of where you will find out if you have a copay or not. So, Charles, if you want to tell us about like priority list number one, man, let's uh, let's hear about that one. Well, yeah, perfect. Well, I ended up actually printing it out so I could read it per ver verbatim so it can help me out so I don't know. Uh you know, forget anything and leave you guys. For sure, there. for sure. So for priority, yeah, priority group number one, uh, you know, it, it basically says you have to be service connected disability that we've rated 50% or more disabling or have a service connected disability that we've concluded makes you unable to work, also called unemployable or receive the Medal of Honor. Yeah, so, so let's so let's break that down just a little bit, right? So so 50% is kind of, you know, that criteria. And a lot of, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I'm not covered until I get 50%, right? Actually at 50%, you go into that priority list one, and that's where you, you don't have any co-pays, right? You, yeah. Everything you go for is going to be, is going to be taken care of. Um, now, the only thing there is, is dental, dental and, and vision, right? Dental and vision are kind of one of those, uh, one of those special ops, um, you know, that, that you're looking at the hundred percent for, unless of course it was a service connected condition as well. Um, and then, and then, you know, the unemployable, right? So unemployable being TDIU. So if you're TDIU status, you know, you're going to, you're going to qualify for that as well. And then, you know, as you said, medal of honor, right? You're going to know if you have a medal of honor or not. So, you, <laughs> you know, know. <laughs> um, if, yeah, at least, at least we hope, you know, right. Um, but yeah, and then, and then kind of priority level two is, is basically anything that they, that the VA has rated 
30 or 40 percent disabling right so Correct. so it's kind of like a kind of like a little specialty group there but you know um a lot of veterans that do come to 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 me for for guidance right and i'm sure you see the same thing are actually right around that 30 to 40 percent right when they first come here um okay. to uh to vaci as well um but yeah so you're you're technically a priority too and and all of this stuff you can find on on the myhealth.va.gov website as well um you can find what priority list you are in cool. um now priority list number three covers a, a a big chunk, right? A big chunk of a big chunk of veterans, I would say. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to kind of yeah, basically go probably those. That, the vast majority of them. But uh, let me read that uh, information for you, so you guys can uh, hear it out. So priority group number three, uh, it says may assign uh, to you by priority group three if any of the below descriptions are true. So a former prisoner of war received the Purple Heart uh, Medal were discharged for disability that was caused by or got worse because of your active duty or service have a service connected disability that we have uh we have rated as 10 percent or 20 disabling were awarded special eligibility classification under title 38 usc 1151 benefits for individuals disabled by treatment or vocational rehabilitation and then also are receiving a VA and attendance or household benefits and have received a VA determination of being catastrophically disabled. Heck yeah. Um, so, and, and as I talked earlier, right. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the vocational readiness program, right. Which, uh, which, which is another benefit offered to veterans. If you have a disability that is, you know, kind of a, a, a barrier to, to employment, right. You can, you can apply for that. Um, and I know we, I know we probably have a, we probably have a Facebook live coming up about that, but, but that puts you in, that puts you in, you know, uh, the, the priority group three for, for, for healthcare as well. So, Correct. um, you know, you could be rated at 10% and, and, you know, you're in priority group three. Okay. So we'll kind of, we'll kind of go over some of the copay stuff too. Um, cause when you're, when you're below 30%, um, or I'm sorry, when you're below 50%, there is, there's copays that do coincide with treatment. Um, for certain conditions, right? So if you are service connected for, for a disability that you are going to seek treatment for, there isn't a, there isn't a copay for that. But if you go there, say I'm service connected for my back, right? And if I'm going to go there for, for my knee, that's been bothering me, right? There may be a copay that is associated. And we'll kind of touch on that a little bit as well as we go along here. But the um, good thing, Travis, I'm sorry to interrupt that. Those no, copays, you're good. Those copays are uh, compared to uh, the civilian side. Uh, they're extremely inexpensive. So it's not something that's really going to, uh, you know, hurt you uh, in your pocket. You know, it's it's a very good service. It's very uh, made uh, friendly for the veteran, you know, economically. So that's the good thing about it. Those co-pays are, you know, within manageable uh, cost. Yeah, and actually, I just want to touch on one of the quick questions that was posted a couple minutes ago by, by Chuck here. So 100% gets dental and vision. So, so vision's actually covered um, throughout, right? um but but dental yeah dental is that is at 100 percent is when dental coverage is, is being taken care of unless like i said you are service connected service for connect. a dental condition right That's correct. um you know you, you don't have to be at 100 percent for that to be covered um you know because it's technically a service connected condition so you know priority group five you know if you if you don't have a service connected disability or or if you have a non-compensable condition so zero percent um and you have an annual income that is below the adjusted income limits that's that's when you qualify for priority group five or if you have the va pension benefits right so va pension benefits are out there um and then also if you're eligible for any type of medicaid programs um so that's, that's priority group five um priority group five is based you know a lot on that uh, kind of a lot on that income stuff and and to be honest you know um yeah, I mean, there's 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 still there's still things that you can do with with a priority group five, right? Um, there's still a lot of care that you can get taken care of, and and yeah, um, priority group six, man, we've only got a couple more left here. Let's see what the let's see what six has got. All right, so let me hit up number six, so then that way you guys can get that information. Uh, it says for priority group six is uh, if you have comp compensable service connected disability that was uh, that we have rated as zero percent or disabling. 
were exposed to ionizing radiation during atmospheric testing or during the occupation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, participate in Project uh, 112 uh, slash SHAD. Uh, served in the Republic of Vietnam between January 9th, 1962 and May 7th, 1975. Served in the Persian Gulf between August 2nd, 1990 and November 11th, 1998. Served on active duty at Camp Lejeune for at least 30 days between August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987. And then also are currently or newly enrolled in VA healthcare uh, and served in theater combat operations on November 11th, 1998 and were discharged less than five years ago. Yep, so, so priority group six right there actually covers a majority of veterans right so so a lot of those vets that are out there that like well you know i uh you know i never you know i don't i don't have any disabilities right or you know i've never applied for disabilities that's kind of that's kind of the area that they fall into right um you know i mean it covers it covers some large chunks you know from 62 to 75 from 90 to 98 and then 98 on right so basically yeah. you know they're saying serving in the theater combat oper operations after nine or, uh, september i'm sorry november 11th 1998 so it has to be after November um, 11th, 1998. So basically that's all the way up until now. They haven't actually put a cap on that yet. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of veterans. I mean, all the way from is. Vietnam. My, my uncle's a Vietnam vet and, uh, you know, he's uh, close to his, I think, 80s, I'm assuming. So that covers a vast range, uh, you yeah, know, couple generations uh, of, uh, of service members, to be quite yeah. honest. Yeah, and, and you notice how Priority Group 5 had said, uh, you know, if you're rated at zero percent and you have that income level group, priority group six actually deletes out that income level. Now, it's That's it's right. if you're connected at zero percent, you're eligible for the health care um, on priority group six. Um, now, now, one of the big ones here, too, is is priority group and seven and eight are, are kind of mainly based on income. Limits, income. Right? right. So so if you're if your income if your adjusted gross income right for the area that you live in um is below the geographic area so if your if your income is below your geographic area um and you agree to pay copays right that's that's when you fall into uh in the in the, in the basically priority group six or i'm sorry priority group seven and priority group eight um you know and and, and speaking of copays man um you know there's so there's there's when you, when you hear copay, right, you're thinking of, oh man, you know, that's, that's where I gotta, you know, that's where I gotta, I shovel out the money. Right. Um, the copays are actually extremely, extremely affordable. Extreme. Um, <laughs> you know, so for priority group one through five, and this is for urgent care, right. Only, um, priority group one through five, um, you know, for the first three visits each calendar year, there's, there's zero dollar copay. Right. But if yeah. you have more than three visits per year to urgent care, then they do they do add in a thirty dollar a thirty dollar copay, which thirty dollars okay. you know is it isn't very much, right? Compared to compared to your your healthcare premiums that you may pay through your employer, right? So you know when you're when you're thinking of VA healthcare, you know, and and and, and it being covered, um, you know, yeah, you may have you may have a copay. But at the same time, you would have a copay on your own private insurance, but you're also paying the premiums as well, right? So you know you're you're, you're basically just compounding your expenses there by by not utilizing the VA healthcare, yeah. um, you know, and then and then kind of you know for the urgent care stuff, priority group six, um, if it's a condition that's covered um, by special authority, you know, there's no no copay. Now priority group seven and eight kind of have thirty dollar copays for any type of urgent care visit that you have there. Um, you know, but to be honest, you know, the, the copays are, the copays are very nominal for, for the care that you're getting, you know, um, there are some, there are some $50 copays out there. Um, but, but, but compared to civilian yeah, right. aspect is it's very, uh, very, very low. I mean, yeah, some oh, yeah. copays are even percentage, you know, that yeah. the your insurance will only cover 80% of uh you know the cost and you're stuck with the other 20 so if yeah. the cost is really significant uh that 10 to 20 percent difference that you have to pay is extremely significant i mean sometimes you may not even have that uh, available 
So, you know, using the VA health care system, it's, it's extremely uh, beneficial, uh, especially if it's there for you. And, and I know I know Candela just posted a comment over here that, that was talking about, you know, priority group one and type two diabetes, you know, because of Agent Orange. There you go. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. Um, so if, if you are in priority group number one, you have you have no medication co-pays at all. Right. Um, which is which is phenomenal because you can get, you know, I mean, you can get, you know, the the, the generic. Right. You can get the the, right. the preferred generic. Right. Yeah. So. Um, brand name prescriptions out there right so if you're if you're if you're priority group one you have you have no copay for for any type of medications um and and then if you know priority groups two through eight they, they kind of carry carry some uh carry some copays for medications but those medications are only if they're being used to treat a non-service connected condition if it is a service connected condition no that will be covered you won't have a copay for that Correct. Um, which is which is a really phenomenal thing. Now, looking at looking at medication copays, right? So, for instance, if you have a uh, if you have a tier one drug, right? So a, a, a preferred generic prescription, right? Um, a one to thirty day supply of that is only a five dollar copay. A, a sixty one to ninety day supply is fifteen dollars, right? So, so a generic drug like that being being anywhere between five and fifteen dollars is 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 definitely is definitely a, a good benefit, right? So, and like I said, it, that is if you're not service connected for that condition, you may have those medication copays. Um. Now, looking at you know even brand name stuff, you know your copay is kind of following that same tier I did one to thirty and, and sixty one to ninety is eleven dollars and thirty three dollars. Right. So I don't I don't know about you, but when I was when I was carrying private insurance, man, I don't think I get a name, a name brand prescription drug for for less than thirty dollars or even a one to thirty day supply. Right. So, you know, phenomenal stuff there. Um, it looks like we got a we got a comment over there, too, about having private insurance now that I'm eligible for VA health care. Should I drop my private insurance priority group three? So to be honest, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you yes or no. Right. I will, I will never, I will never make that call for you. That's something that you got to kind of look into and think about. But, but one of the things that I have is I, I still carry private health insurance as well as my VA health insurance. Um, you know, so that, and that's a choice that I made now, yeah. now there's other people out there, um, you know, that, that only carry VA health care. In fact, uh, you know, we got a we got our our training manager on our on our call today. Um, you know, he we were we were talking about this earlier earlier this week, um, and uh, and yeah, he he takes he takes his health care into the VA, right? That's where he goes. He goes to the VA for all of his health care, so he utilizes the VA the VA insurance or VA health care as opposed to private insurance. So. So unfortunately, I can't say, "Hey, yeah, go for it," or I can't say, "No, that would be a bad idea." You know, ultimately, it's it's personal preference, right? It's, it's... Um, like you said, Travis, it's personal preference, uh, depending on how you feel or who your providers are that you already feel comfortable or accustomed yeah. to. Uh, you know, that's something that you, you know, you have to make that choice. Uh, you know, for me personally, I prefer to have both uh, because I like to be covered. Uh, I like to do a lot of projects and I'm accident prone. So <laughs> I prefer to have be insured as much as possible. Uh, to be able to have those benefits, but uh, it's personal preference, really. And, and one of the, and one of the things I'll kind of touch on with that too is is emergency, right? Emergency visits, right? So if something does happen and you have to go to your emergency room for anything, there is a time frame that you that you have to submit that information to the VA in order to get that paid for, right? So if you miss that deadline, you know you're you're looking at you're looking at you know filing with you know kind of looking at almost like the claims process with the supplementals and the higher level reviews, right? You're you're having to ask them to, hey, can you please look at this again, right? Um, and 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 by carrying both, you know, I, I don't have to worry about that, right? So if if for some reason I, I don't hit that time cut off that that time deadline, I can I can just build my own private insurance, right? So you know, there's there's benefits, there's pros and cons to each one. Um, and and one of the other big things too with with that, and I'll I'll just kind of touch on it a little bit. There is a there is a website that the VA has out there, and, and you can type it into Google. You can just type VA locator, VA location, right? VA locator. Um, and you can actually look to find out those those urgent cares and emergency rooms that are nearby you that may not be 
a VA clinic, but they're still covered by VA healthcare. Um, because there's a big thing out there called called care in the community, right? And the, the, the Mission Act, right? That's one of the uh, it's one of the big things there is uh, you know the the care in the community aspect. So, and we'll we'll touch on that just a little bit here. But but Charles, why don't you why don't you just tell us a little bit about Champ VA? All right. Uh, well, the Champ VA is basically it allows for a veteran that is uh, deceased uh, for their spouse to be able to obtain benefits. Uh, in that aspect, uh, if you give me one moment, uh, I'm actually looking for the information. I do apologize, uh, but that's basically. Uh, oh, you're good. You're good. You know, like I said, uh, if you give me yeah. one, one yeah, moment. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll just hop on there. So <laughs> champ, champ VA, right? Um, you know, if you're if you're the spouse or child of a veteran, as as you were saying, um, and 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 the veteran is 100% permanent and total um, connected for. For their disabilities, um, they can apply for the Champ VA healthcare program. And appreciate uh, appreciate the VA claims and started tossing that into uh, into the Champ VA area. Um, and uh, and yeah, so Champ VA basically covers your family at that point, right? Um, and it, trust me, like we could go in. We I mean, we could probably talk for the next forty five minutes on on Champ VA. But well, my biggest thing is, you know check out check out that website that was just posted in the comments by uh by our moderator and uh and that kind of covers a lot of that a lot of that champ va stuff but you know there are different qualifying factors as well for it right so if you're a surviving spouse or child of a veteran you know who died from a service-connected disability um you're also eligible so like i said you know there's there's different tiers for that as well or different eligibility reasons for it but uh a lot of times you know it's it's when it's when the veteran does get 100 percent permanent total um that you're eligible there and 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 a lot of people actually carry their own their own private insurance and the chant va as well um you know because because then it eliminates a lot of different copays right that you, that you may have so um yeah so charles uh you you kind of you kind of just went through this yourself man why don't you uh why don't you tell us a little bit about enrollment right um you know like the different ways to enroll at the at the va for healthcare. Uh, basically, you could enroll by going into your uh, local county VSO representative. You can go to the VA and enroll. Uh, you can also call uh, the 1-800 number uh, to actually uh, get enrollment. And once you get enrollment or through the Internet as well, uh, through www.va.gov. Uh, I prefer to use uh, the va.gov uh aspect because i'm a little bit more uh internet savvy and i i don't like going out often so i feel that i can do it at the privacy of my home and and provide whatever information i need to provide and then from there it's going to ask you to create a a verification check uh to make sure that your information is secure uh you definitely not with everything that's going on with identity theft and so forth uh you definitely don't want other people taking your information uh so once you put that, it will give you a verification step uh, and it'll identify you in order to be able to actually open up your VA page. Once you get into the VA page, uh, there are different selections that you can actually do. Uh, and once you take a look at the VA health, you're going to provide all your information uh, to be able to be enrolled. Uh, so then that way you can start the process. They'll send you, uh, you know, your enroll for our identification card uh in that aspect so you can get an id card and you can start using your va uh benefits uh you know at the healthcare. so i basically did it myself uh you know i'll be quite honest i'm, I'm one of the vets that you know came out healthy out of the military uh you know never thought that i needed uh any benefits or my benefits were connected because of the mindset suck it up buttercup and uh never used any of my benefits and now with uh being uh educated with the information that that's been given to me uh you know i've definitely used the va health system uh and it's i'll be honest for me it's relieved a lot of uh stress uh you know reference towards what i have uh at my disposal for my health uh you know being a licensed contractor or or was being a licensed contractor i paid uh, extremely high premiums and i mean like that's just stressful every month so having the VA uh, health system, really for me, it just relieved a whole lot off of me. 
uh, and that's basically how you, you know, and end up uh, using the system. So you do have to enroll, uh, use a uh, local VSO. Uh, you know, you can use the internet to actually uh, go in through the www.va.gov uh, and actually register and sign in and uh, go through the steps or call the 1-800 number uh, where you have is 1-877-222-8387. Uh, and you can start uh, beginning the process and start the process, at least get registered. Definitely, definitely. And, and a lot of times this actually happens automatically. Say say if you if you were to file a disability and you got service connected for that disability, sure. um, there is an automatic enrollment as well. Um, that's kind of how I was enrolled into the into the VA healthcare system. Um, you know, because when I when I when I first got out, like I didn't I, I didn't go to the VA, right? I used my own private health insurance. I didn't know that I could go to the VA for certain things. Um, and uh and yeah, so one of the, one of the questions that that we'll kind of touch on too is Vel, Velvet James put in put in the comments. You know, what happened if you had to go to the ER and had to have surgery immediately in a private hospital? Um, so one of the big things there is you you do still have to follow the uh, it, it, it's it, there's an hour time frame. I'm not sure exactly on the hour, so I don't really want to say what it is exactly. But I know it's within a couple of days that you have to that you have to basically get that information over. Now, if you are incapacitated, right, and you're not able to make that, there is there is kind of another grace period with that as well. Right. Um, as long as as long as you can prove that, hey, I was not able to make the phone call or I was not able to verify or or let them know. Now, one of the things with that is, you know, um, as as a, as a disabled veteran and, and and a veteran that uses the VA healthcare system, um, I, I carry my VA ID with me, right? I carry my my VA health ID with me at all times. So. A lot of times that will kind of spark, uh, you know, potential potential people to end up calling the VA and letting them know as well. Um, or even, you know, if, if it is an emergency and uh, and and, you know, you you are potentially incapacitated, you know, the, the medics and stuff on scene will, will be able to see that as well um, and kind of, uh, you know, get you to where you need to be. Right. Now, I'm sorry, I just wanted to add, you know, within that grace period, I know that, you know, it could be very stressful when when you're actually uh, in a hospital. And you have a lot of things uh, on your mind other than submitting paperwork, uh, you know, at least try to make that initial intent if, you know, if you have a family member or whatever it may be to make that at least that first contact uh, and provide at least the initial documentation that they're asking for. So at least uh, they know that that intent was made uh, probably no different than uh, like an intent to file. You're making that intent to let them know that, yes, you know, I'm, I'm you know, hospitalized and you know, uh, I'm submitting whatever information I need to in order to let you guys know that, you know, uh, this is what's going on. That way they have it on record and it's on file. Uh, that way you're not out of that grace period and, and you're stuck with, with a bill, especially if you have that benefit afforded to you. You want to take advantage of it. So, you know, with that taking advantage of it, you know, you got to follow that, that, that protocol, that procedure and uh, eliminate some more stress off of you, at least with those medical bills, uh, I've had knee surgery in the past, and I'll be honest, uh, it's not cheap. <laughs> and the stress yeah. of paying the bills and having them hound you and call you, it, it sucks. So use the benefit, you know, use the VA benefits that are there for you, and and just you know follow what they're asking. So then that way, uh, you know, you can have those things covered. Well, and that and that brings up, you know, that brings up a great point too, to Charles as well is, you know, what type of care is available at the VA, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there is, there is primary, right? Your primary doctor can be through the VA. So, so typically, you know, any type of annual physicals, anything that you go into for, for just, you know, general care, um, can, can be done directly at the VA along yeah. with that special specialty stuff, right? So surgery, surgeries can be conducted at the VA. Um, the VA has physical therapy. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different specialty type cares, you know, uh, a lot of veterans have feet issues, right? They're podiatrists at, at the VA, sure. right? So, That's you know, there's true. general surgeons, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different things there. And, and one of the, one of the coolest things about the VA healthcare system too, I think is if they can't provide it, they will get you to a provider in the community to fine. provide that care for you. Correct. Um, so for instance, I have a, uh, I have, I have a hip issue and, um, I've actually got a torn labrum on my hip and, and my, my local VA is not able to do that surgery. So they're actually contracting with a care with, with a, a provider inside the community to do that surgery for me. Right. 
so you know it, it and, and all that's covered i just i just show up they you know they check me into my appointment they're like va still and i'm like yep and then and then bam it's taken care of right no co-pays nothing out of pocket um you know and then on top of that there's there's other urgent care clinics out there and then and then you know a lot of the bigger hospitals will have emergency emergency rooms as well so you know the ton of different types of cares available at the va as well um and uh and yeah, if, so you know, if you need one, use it. So yeah, if they if, if they don't have it readily available, uh, like Travis said, uh, they do have a network, so they'll find uh, somebody within the network to you know provide you that service and that care. So don't feel that just because the VA doesn't show it there or they don't announce it, they don't have it. Uh, they do service every, you know everything uh, that's needed uh, within their network or their provider system. And also one of the big things I wanted to mention, uh, also the mental health aspect, take advantage of it. You know, it's extremely important, uh, you know, uh, to use it. It's, it's there. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that kind of goes on to that VA locator that I talked about as well. But, but in addition to that, um, the VA also w within the mission act, if, if you're not able to get in, in a certain amount of time, like in a reasonable amount of time, you know, some, I'm not gonna lie, some VA, some VA appointments that I've, that I've called in to make, I can't get in for three months, right? Four months. So if you ask if they would transfer that to community care, they are able to do that as well. So that's one of the other things that, you know, I kind of want to bring up about the community care as well, because if, if, if you are struggling to get in, you can definitely ask for them to transfer your care over to the community care and they'll set you up with a, with a provider inside the community. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and Mark Nichols, you had some questions. Uh, I just want to touch on those quick um, inside inside the chat. So, um, can you speak on Tricare Prime eligibility in regards to veteran dependent, and then also what's the difference between Champ VA and Tricare Prime? So, you know the 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 Tricare Prime aspect, right? Is uh, we had hundred percent. Typically, typically Tricare is is used for retirees, right? So, um, or or if you're currently in, or if you are a reservist, right? Um, you know, you can you can purchase Tricare as well. So if you do have Tricare, there is portions of the VA healthcare system and benefits that you can still utilize. Um, but 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 Tricare is your primary care provider for insurance. So if you do qualify for Tricare, um, they they do want you to use that Tricare. However, you can also qualify for other for other VA healthcare benefits as well. Um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on, on, on like the TRICARE and the VA aspect a little bit, um, you know, like Medicare, Medicaid, other private insurance, you know, none of that has an effect on your VA healthcare benefits either. Um, you're, you're still eligible whether or not you have any of those other, other insurance stuff. So. Travis, I also wanted to touch uh basis, especially what we've been going on through COVID and all that stuff, but uh, it, it kind of part of it and not, uh, that if by any chance your distance is too far, they also provide virtual, uh, you know, uh, for those that were not aware of it, you know, uh, they can offer that service. Uh, I believe there has to be a certain criteria, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, of distance and not being able to make the appointment. Uh, but that is also something else that's offered, uh, you know, that if it's needed, uh, or you just can't make it due to distance, it is provided. Uh, and I think it's kind of been enhanced. I'm not sure, maybe you could explain if it's in, been enhanced due to COVID, they've noticed uh, that they've been using it a little bit more, more frequent per se. Yeah, there is there is that distance aspect uh, included in there, as you said, you know, not not a lot of our veterans live within within commuting distance to, to a VA hospital, right? Typically you're looking at about an hour, hour kind of commute for that in order to like kick in, but one of the other big things with that too is you are paid you are paid mileage you can submit for sure. reimbursement of mileage right yeah. um you know now now there is there is like a uh um what's the uh there is like a kind of a copay associated with that too right a deductible deductible is what i was thinking of i just couldn't think yeah. of the word but uh there is a deductible with uh with with the with the mileage reimbursement as well um so just keep that in mind and it, and you know it, it may vary depending on location but um you know typically there will be i i, I think my my deductible in order for me to get paid is uh right around like uh 
was it like eight dollars or something like that is what my deductible for for travel costs are um so you know if if it if my mileage isn't equaling up to that i only live 27 minutes from from the va hospital so you know i typically do not hit the mileage requirement so i don't i don't submit for it but if you are commuting right or if someone is bringing you right if someone has to bring you to the hospital right so they can also you know be reimbursed for their mileage so you know that's one of the other things is if you do live too far away right so you know definitely definitely request for them to uh to, to potentially find you a care in the community or or you know submit that mileage stuff um charles i know we've had some questions about glasses today did you did you have any information you wanted to cover with glasses uh with the glasses aspect uh no yeah. i wanted to really uh, touch at the moment with uh walter moses because uh I just did my ID card myself, uh, had to get it replaced. Uh, and basically you can use, uh, what I used is I ended up going to uh, va.gov. Uh, and basically I requested a new ID card because I actually lost mine. Uh, and they can actually send you a duplicate. Uh, they'll ask you, uh, you know, more or less to make the duplicate. If you want to update your image or not, you can you select the image uh, just meet the criteria that they're asking and hit submit very simple process is not is not hard at all you can do it at you know at your home the luxury of your own home and then hit submit and you get a printable version that you can hold temporarily uh while the hard copy comes in so uh, that's an option of doing uh your id card without going to the hospital it's very simple awesome nice good deal good deal yeah, so hopefully that uh, hopefully that helped out. You know, updating the ID card. Um, now, if you're just updating your ID card, right? Um, I mean, that you can definitely do that with a phone call, even too. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what what type of ID card you know you are talking about, but um, you know, a lot of times you can just do that uh, via phone call to the to the to the VA uh, hospital as well. Because that's the other thing too is when you think of VA hospitals, right? You're you're kind of thinking doctors and stuff, but there's actually people that work at the VA hospitals that that are there for benefits, right? So they actually like, you know, for for health benefits, right? They they can answer any any questions with that. There's a lot of like caseworkers and stuff that work there that are able to answer a lot of these different questions. And a lot of times when you when you first roll into roll into your hospital. Um, you know, there may be like an admin wing where, where all of these like caseworkers and stuff are at. And, and to be honest, I mean, you can, you could probably just sit down with one of them and kind of go over a lot of the benefits. I know my, when I first was enrolled, I had, I had a caseworker who called me on the phone and then sent me, sent me an email actually of, of a ton of different benefits that I didn't know existed. Um, and that was, uh, that was phenomenal. So, um, you so, know some of the some of the criteria for for covering VA uh, or for the VA covering glasses too is you, you know having having that service connected disability on the eyes right um, you know potentially even you know former POWs Purple Hearts um, and and if you receive any any entitlement on underneath uh, Title Thirty Eight as well which is kind, kind of, of that follows, education uh, yeah it kind of follows some of the same criteria as some of the other priority uh, lists in order to get it and then I mean also like if you had a stroke diabetes uh that they're connected multiple sclerosis uh what is it vascular disease uh there's a couple more uh, geriatric chronic illness uh and reaction to prescribed medicine cataract surgery or surgeries uh, of the eye ear or brain a uh, traumatic brain injury or polytrauma uh, organ often caused by a blast uh but these have to be uh treatment of an illness of which you are receiving va care so those are some of the other stuff that will get you qualified for getting glasses uh, that I. Yeah, and one of the one of the things I wanted to touch on with that, too, is so so migraines. Right. If uh, you know, if you have if you have chronic migraines, right, um, you can actually get, you know, the, the, the tinted lenses to help with right. with screens and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we can we can kind of jump into some questions if you all have any questions, um, you know, in the. Uh, in the chat there um you know and, and 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 once again you know aaron if you want to throw up you know kind of the the elite uh the elite uh, sign up program and then you know we do offer you know discovery calls with uh with coaches as well so 
So you're able to kind of, you know, bring up, bring up your conditions, right? Bring up kind of what you have going on. Cause like I said, in the beginning, you know, a lot of stuff that we deal with is, is compensation, right? Is disability right. compensation side. But, uh, you know, it, I, once again, I, I love doing classes like this because I'm able to kind of dig deeper, you know, and, and figure and find out other things as well. So, um, I'm glad yeah, that Travis and, uh, enjoys the classes. I get a little bit nervous cause, uh, <laughs> It, it's one of those things that uh, I enjoy the more personal reaction when I'm able to call, yeah. you know, the client and really spend that one on one and create a relationship. Uh, and that's what I love about this job, that this job creates personal relationships uh, with each vet uh, to be able to, you know, get their benefits that they deserve. So uh, yeah. like Travis, he's, he's cool with it. <laughs> I like the more personal uh, type of phone call where I can talk to the vet and, and get to listen Every time right. I listen to you guys, it makes me more humble. So I really enjoy that personal aspect of the uh, of this job. Thank you. So, so George, I see you got a question over there. How do how to get medications from outside providers covered under the VA? So there's actually a couple couple different ways that you can do this, right? Um, you could you you could ask the provider to um, you know basically contact the VA and, and get those prescriptions transferred over, or or if you have a primary care doctor, you can let them know, hey, you know, I have this prescription. From from this private private doctor, right? And and I want to I want to get it covered by the VA. And typically, they will just transfer those over. Um, I've done that with a couple of medications. Um, let them know, hey, this is what I'm on, and um, you know, I got I have high blood pressure, so that was one of the things that I had them do was uh, was kind of take take that prescription and start filling it at the VA as well. Um, there's a uh, there's a Facebook user. I'm not sure who that is, but um, it is a retired ID card different from a VA ID card? Yeah, it most certainly is. Yeah. Um, typically, you know, your your retired ID is going to be that little that little green one, or or potentially the white one now. Um, and and a VA ID card, there's a couple different forms. There's one that's that's a choose VA, right? Um, mm -hmm. And entitles you to to certain benefits and discounts. Okay. Um, and then you also have your V uh, your 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 VA healthcare identification card, which which your VA healthcare identification card comes with a barcode, right? The barcode on it allows you to check in your appointments when you're going to, when you're going to the clinic. Um, it also provides, you know, the, you know, say service connected on it. Right. And um, it also provides kind of proof of, Hey, I am covered by the VA for health and healthcare. Um, so yeah. Um, astigmatism is that also a disability that can be claimed? So, kind of my thoughts on astigmatism right so yes it it, it it potentially is something that could be claimed however whether or not it's part of your game plan is kind of one of your big things and i'm not sure if you're signed up with with the coach here or not but that would definitely be a phenomenal conversation to have with the coach um and we, we can go ahead and definitely guide you into the right direction so yeah, I think um, everybody's case is different it's just you have to really take a look at it and see you know if it's uh viable or not all right so todd yeah um going on to your question is there is there any dental vision available for vets under 100 percent? i am 80 percent. my wife is 50. so one of the things that we talked about was was with i'll just start off with the vision stuff if you have a disability that is service connected for your vision yes your your vision is definitely covered or if it is yeah. um you know caused by like another service connected disability as well it could it could potentially be covered along with you know, Charles kind of went through a list of things, right? So former POW, Purple Heart, um, things like that. Um, but dental, dental, unless of course it was service connected, does not kick in until 100%, 100% for dental. Um, and uh, unless of course you have a service connected disability during that time period as well. Um, let's see here. Not a discharge. I have, uh, let's say Ronnie Ash. I don't know if it says is uh, basal cell cancer and other skin cancer, SC. Service connected. So basically, he's asking if uh, if those can be service connected. And in, in, in here, I'll kind of uh, I'll kind of give a uh, give a big a, a big thing about service connection stuff, right? So obviously, there's there's ways to service connect things that didn't happen in the military. However, if it happened in the military, right, that's one of your biggest things there. Um, you know, we talk about the Calusa Triangle all the time, right? So the Calusa Triangle being being kind of a BVA uh, decision that that it led to, you know, utilizing you know three different aspects for your claims. So you've got you know current condition or current diagnosis, right? Extremely important. Without a current diagnosis, there really is no disability there. 
Um, and then the other aspect of that is a in-service event or aggravation of, of a condition. And that could be, you know, that, hey, this disability caused this disability to happen. Yeah. Then you need to have a nexus to tie those two in, right? So you need to be able to establish, um, you know, documentation that, that does tie those two dis or the, the condition along with what it's also connected to either in service or another service connected disability. Um, well, it's uh, you can find that on the on the VA.gov uh, because I was actually studying that today. Uh, and, it, you know, it's a lot of information. It's uh, under chemical or hazardous material exposure. Uh, and, you know, just basically go in, take a look at it. That will probably give you a little bit more information of if that may be uh, viable or not, uh, if you're going that route. Uh, it's funny that you hit that up because I literally uh, printed that out and, and I was trying to study that to get a little bit more familiarized, uh, you know, on that aspect. So that that would probably be your best bet is refer uh, to that particular section, and that will probably give you a little bit more clarification in that aspect. Definitely, definitely. And um, you know, as always, you know, um, in, any comments or any questions that we didn't get to in the comments today, we we will be going back through those and making sure that you guys get the answers. So so be on the lookout, right? We'll tag you guys in uh, in 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 the chat and. Uh, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll answer any questions that we may not have gotten to. But um, you know, we're about ready to wrap up today. We appreciate y'all joining us today. Um, it was great talking to you. Great talking to you about uh, about VA healthcare. Um, it is definitely something that if you're not enrolled, make sure make sure you go get enrolled. Right? It could it could potentially yeah. be be extremely beneficial for you. Um, and and yeah, outside of that, um, you know, appreciate y'all hanging out and. Uh, have a good rest of your Wednesday. And Charles, thank you for, for hosting today, man. No, well, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for all the information you provided. Uh, you know, I really appreciate you. Also, as a service member to a service member. Awesome. Definitely. Appreciate and Aaron, thank you behind the scenes as well. Appreciate thank you, your phenomenal work. Um, thank you, Travis. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. All right. See you. Stay blessed.